Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the second module of PC which is Parallel Computing and in this module we have the questions from the previous paper, previous schemes. I have analyzed and kept the most important ones and make sure you don't miss any of these questions to score 80% marks in the exam. And before starting please do like and subscribe, it helps me make more videos like this and if you want the PDF of this you can DM me on Instagram here. So without wasting more time let's get started. The first question is discuss GPU programming in detail. Okay, you might have heard a lot about GPU, right? So what is GPU graphic processing unit? Okay, it is faster processor. Okay, CPU is central processing unit. It processes slowly, but GPU processes fastly. Okay, GPU programming refers to writing the program that run on GPU instead of CPU. GPUs are designed for massive parallel com computation. So if something has to be done fast, parallelly if you do it, it will be in less time, right? So GPU does exactly that. Massively parallel computation is there, meaning they, they can process thousands of operations simultaneously. Thousands operations in CPU will be done one after the other but in GPU all of them will be done at the same time so it is very very much faster than the CPU. This makes them ideal for workloads such as graphic rendering here many multiple processes needs to be performed scientific computing AI and machine learning in all of these multiple data needs to be analyzed and processed so GPU is uh, coming into picture in that scenario. Okay. Next is GPU architecture. It has a different architecture compared to CPU. CPU, if we uh, revise, it has fewer cores. It is designed for sequential processing one after the other and large and complex control unit is present. It is optimized for low latency task, means low delay tasks. But GPU is hundred or thousands of smaller, simpler cores are present. It is designed for parallel execution. High throughput is there rather than low latency. Throughput means output. More output we will be getting. And ideal for tasks that can be broken into small independent operations. So if there is a task, break them down into multiple small tasks and each will be uh, uh, executed parallelly. So it will be uh, executing the whole task and getting the result very faster. That is the second uh, point. The third point is why GPU programming? Because it favors high parallelism, faster computation for numerical and vector operations, efficient memory bandwidth and ideal for data parallel tasks. Okay. And key cases include machine learning and deep learning image and video processing, scientific simulations, cryptography and big data processing. Next is analyze the role of Amdahl's law in evaluating the performance of parallel systems. Parallel system, how well they are performing is determined by the Amdahl's law. Amdahl's law is a fundamental principle used to evaluate the maximum possible speed up of a program, how much fast the program can become when parts of it are parallelized. After making it parallelized, how many, uh, how much time it's taking to execute a program that is determined by the Amdahl's law. It helps in understanding how much performance improvement can be achieved using multiple processors. If there are multiple processors, in each processor will be doing each the task parallelly, how much more efficient we can make. Okay, so the formula would be as follows: speed up is equal to one by one minus p plus p by n. P is the fraction of program that can be parallelized. Out of 5, if suppose 3 are parallelized, means 3 by 5 will be the ratio. And n is number of processor, which is 5. Like that, if we do it, we will be getting able to get out the rough idea of how much speed up the processor can happen. I mean, the task execution can happen if we were to run it sequentially. And now, since we are running it parallelly, how much increase in the performance it has given, that is calculated using this formula, speed up formula. Okay. Highlights the impact of serial portion. Okay, the law emphasizes that non serialable part of the program limits the overall performance. Even if many processors or infinite processors are used, speed up is restricted by the serial fraction. Okay, and only 80% of the program is parallel. The speed up is only 5x no matter how many processors are added. Okay, and third one is helps to determine the efficient use of processors. Processor does not always improve performance. Amdahl's law helps determine the point where adding the additional pro processes diminish, yields diminishing returns means it's not always like if you have multiple processor it will be better the point in which you need to have multiple processors that is the most crucial point okay because the point matters if you're putting it in the start or the end or in the middle based on that the performance also affects because each will be having a different level of tasks okay so useful for algorithm and system optimization it evaluates scalability of the parallel system how much higher we can make the product as by this analysis and it guides the architectural decisions to choose the processor count, balance the systems and evaluate whether certain applications benefit from the parallel hardware. If there is any benefit we are going to get or not, that is also analyzed. Okay, Amdahl's law is uh, used for that. Amdahl's law plays a crucial role in evaluating parallel system performance by quantifying 
maximum speed up exposing limitation of serial executor execution and guiding decisions about how you can make it scalable optimized and efficient okay next is with an in diagram compare speed ups and efficiencies of a parallel program on different problem size the problem size can be uh, of three types the original size will be there make it half it will become half size double it will become double size and processes are always in like 1 2 4 8 16 the formula is e is equal to efficiency is equal to s by p okay so s is the speed up and p is the number of processors okay so if we take the half original or double if the number of processors are 1 2 4 8 16 what will be the speed up speed up will be 1 here in all of these cases but if it is 2 means it will be 1.9 3.1 4.8 6.2 okay so these are some of the speed up and efficiency you can just go through it no need to memorize this one okay next is half problem size means each problem what is the speed up and efficiency what is the reason we are going to get those answers so in half problem size the trend would be it will start from 1 go to 1.9 then 3.1 then 4.8 at 16 processors speed up only rises to 6.2 which is not very high that is one disadvantage efficiency is it declines sharply 1 then 0 0.95 then 0 0.7860 and 39 okay efficiency and speed up both will become less in half problem size reason is when the uh, problem size is small it is okay and fine but as the problem size bec uh, becomes starts to get bigger in that case the cost of communication will increase and the synchronization cost will also increase that's why the loss is there okay next is original problem size it is having, having better scaling and it falls slowly as compared to the half size the reason is workload is large enough to keep the processor busy so communication overhead is smaller compared to the computation time it leads to better utilization and improves speed okay third one is double problem size the best among all it goes from 1 to 1.9 to 3.9 to 7.5 to 14.2 and efficiency is very high one it has fallen just till 0.89 so why it is so because large problem size means more computation less less relative communication overhead and threads remain fully utilized so parallelism will become more effective if these parameters are there okay so overall comparison also given here can go through it the conclusion is as the problem size increases both speed up and efficiency improve and this demonstrates a key performance principle larger problem size leads to better parallel performance because computation increases while parallel overhead stays roughly the same. In parallel, the computation will increase, but the time taken for one execution or thousand executions, it will be same because everything is happening parallelly. Okay. So this is the graph for each of the different types of sizes. The X1 is the half size, plus one is the original size, and the dot one is the double size. Okay. So number of processors as they increase, the speed up will also increase and the highest increase is in the double size ones. Okay. The decrease can also happen in the same way of different uh, problem sizes. Um, the increase in the speed up and the uh, decrease in the efficiency. That means the dec not decrease actually, how much efficiency it is there, as close as it is to one that is the more better one like that. Okay, so as it as and more it goes down, down means it is having lesser efficiency. Okay, next one is explain input output in MIMD systems. In uh, multiple instruction, multiple data, how do you take the input and output? Each processor in MIMD system can perform its own input and output operations. It allows to read different input data, access separate files, and generate independent outputs. Okay, that is the input we need to provide. Shared resources will be there, IO disk, file system, memory buffer, where all of the components come together and then they will be using those resources. Okay. Synchronization is there, like many cases, processor needs to perform the lock operation, semaphores, and barriers in order to have the synchronization between the data. Okay. IO bottleneck is nothing but input output operation where it is one point where it is going to block and cause more waste of time. That is called as bottleneck. Uh, so the bottleneck to reduce we can use caching or we can use the double buffering or we can use parallel file systems. Parallel input output and file systems modern MIMD offer, offers the uh, use of like uh, the modern MIMD system often use parallel file systems such as Luster, GPFS and HDFS. These are the files which are stored parallelly and accessed also parallelly. Okay. The next question is explain scalability in MMD system. Okay, scalability means how much uh, we can increase or we can accommodate more or make the uh, 
size more okay so what uh, what all we can do that we'll be discussing okay so <clears throat> Okay. See, in the discussion of MIMD parallel processing performance, scalability has far more formal definition. That means there is a formal definition which you need to keep in mind. Suppose we now increase the number of processor threads, means how many processors are happening and the threads are happening. If we increase that number, then in that case we find a corresponding rate in the increase of the problem size so that the program always has efficiency E means if the problem size increases based on that we increase the number of processors performing the operation such that if we combine both of these efficiency which we will get that remains constant that increasing in the rate if we find out properly then we can say the program is scalable okay after exactly mention and explain like that okay as an example let's suppose the time for a serial operation is equal to n where the units of t serial are microseconds and n is the problem size okay so this is the problem size for that how much time it takes okay for t parallel it will be n by number of processor plus one that much time it will take so efficiency will be the serial time divided by the parallel time right so it will be n by n plus p so if it is scalable means we increase the number of processor thread by a factor of k if you want to find out the factor x we need to increase the problem size by so that e is remain unchanged so the pro uh, problem will the final equation it will become as kp the number of uh, threads processors and the problem of problem size will become xn so it will be xn by xn plus kp okay if you find out this we will be getting the efficiency here okay that is about the uh, scalability in mmd systems okay there are few definitions are there you need to know what is t serial t parallel speed up and efficiency t serial is total time taken to execute a program on a single processor t parallel time taken to execute the same program using multiple processors simultaneously speed up means measuring how fast a program runs when it is executed on multiple processor that's nothing but t serial divided by t parallel this division is equal to speed up Efficiency indicates how effectively available processor are being used during the parallel execution. Okay. Last is a numerical, which is a parallel algorithm takes 4 seconds. Okay, so T parallel is how much? It is 4 seconds on 8 processors. So P value is equal to 8, like that you have to keep on mentioning. Sequential version takes 32 seconds, means T serial is equal to how much? 32 seconds. Find speed up efficiency. Speed up formula, just now we learned it is T serial by T parallel. That means 32 by 4, that is equal to 8. Efficiency will be S by P. S means it is the number of, uh, sorry, it is a speed up and P is number of processors. How many processors are there? 8 processors are there. So S by P will be 8 by P, which is 100% efficient. Okay. That's all for this video. And if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. It has been more like this. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.